immigration laws and to do so within the 60 days that the Constitution allows. We all acknowledge that the people of Kenya now have another chance to be heard again. There shall and must be an election within that constitutionally stipulated period. Cabinet this morning approved a supplementary budget that shall be forwarded to the National Assembly on Tuesday of next week, in which we set aside resources for the conduct of this fresh election. Thus, the IEBC, in keeping with its mandate, must, without any further delay, undertake the fresh elections. Kenyans expect nothing more and nothing less from them. Fellow Kenyans, the judgment has also created uncertainties and raised matters that require legislative attention. I have therefore requested that Parliament should expeditiously address itself to the issues raised in order to protect our country from any ambiguities and or that may arise from this judgment. Fellow Kenyans, having reversed the judicial precedent of election management in this country, we are left as a people with the following questions. One, is the people's choice in the ballot sufficient to elect leaders of their choice as provided for in our Constitution? Or does it, in future, require a qualitative endorsement by a judge? Two. Now that the Supreme Court has taken the narrow view that a presidential election can be overturned without reference to numbers, what becomes of the constitutional provisions that provide that presidential elections, and for, those, and for that matter, all elections are determined in a democratic society such as Kenya by numbers. Three, it is now clear that had the court verified documents and forms in its possession supplied by the IABC, the so-called unstamped, unsigned, unserialized forms upon which the presidential election was nullified, would have been proven to be falsified. What then happens to this judgment made on the basis of falsified documents? These fellow Kenyans are important questions that all of us as a people must address ourselves too in the fullness of time. I want at this moment 
to once again affirm that as a country, we have a clear constitutional path forward. I take this opportunity to assure Kenyans from all walks of life, as well as our regional and international partners, that our country remains secure and stable. We should therefore go on with the business of building our nation. I have instructed all our security agencies to ensure that they remain firmly on the alert and focused on providing security to all Kenyans and their property, which is a cardinal constitutional responsibility of any government. To our 1.6 million children who have worked hard in preparation for their upcoming final examinations, I wish to take this opportunity to assure you that the arrangements are in place to ensure that your exams are not disrupted by this turn of events. I ask you all to remain focused on your exams, and we as parents are praying and wishing you every success. Finally, I would like to state clearly that the government will do everything under the law to facilitate the IABC to conduct another free fair and credible election in accordance with the ruling of the Supreme Court, an election that will once again enable the people of Kenya to exercise their democratic right of choice. Let me close by saying this. Each one of us especially we leaders, must ensure that even as we enter this new competition, we have a responsibility to ensure that the peace and stability that will deliver to all Kenyans the promise of shared prosperity that we as a people desire. For our part as Jubilee, we now go back to our people with our vision of unity and a transformation agenda that will guarantee a free, equitable, stable, inclusive, and prosperous nation. The people of Kenya will speak again, and this time their voice will and must be heard. Thank you, and God bless Kenya. Asante.